it's Mr. Door back again with Door on Tour, and I've been so excited to interview this guy. I've been waiting for months and months. Um, shout out to Curtis Shaw for making this happen. Kevin Campbell is here. How you doing? Mr. Door on tour, I'm good. <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> and how how's 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 life treating you so far? Well, just like anybody else, life is a bit difficult for some at the moment and uh, others get around it. Some have find it difficult, but I'm still doing quite a bit of work. There's a lot of work online. I'm still getting to travel because I work abroad as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm getting out of the country and back in because there's an exemption, etc. Yeah. Um, so, you know, getting tested every week and stuff like that. So, and I've been fine. So I can't complain. The family's okay. So we just have to get on with it as best we can. Right. Um, so where should we start? Um, when, in, I think it was 95. Uh, when did you know that Nascar Forest was interested in you? Um, I was at, um, I was at Lillyshaw. I was rehabbing from a back operation. And um, I was there. I think I was there for probably three weeks. So you're there from Monday to Friday. You go on weekends. So it was the second week, I think, that I, I heard of the uh, interest. And it was the third week, the back end of the third week, I think it was the Thursday it was, yep. that it came about that every, we'd, we'd agreed everything. So it was a matter of me going to Nottingham and, and signing. So Alan Hill. Alan Hill, yeah. Alan Hill drove down picked me up from Lillishall and drove me back to Nottingham. Oh, and, um, okay. Yeah. Stayed in the Royal Hotel. Royal Hotel, uh, yep. The Royal Hotel. And uh, yep. the same day, me and Chris Bart Williams signed. I'm about to ask a question about Chris Bart Williams. Yeah, so that, was the, so that was the... Obviously, Bartman signed from Sheffield. Yep. So this was the Thursday. So I spent the Thursday night in the Royal. And then the next day, we went down to the ground and obviously signed the contracts and we took pictures of things. You see me and Bartman signing together. It was a yeah, double, yeah, yeah. double signing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, was it was it Frank Frank Clark was the manager then, was it? What what was what did it, what did Frank Clark say to you to sign for Nottingham Forest? No, but i would worked with Frank Clark on loan when I was at Leighton Orient, you see. Oh, okay. So I knew Frank Clark. Frank Clark knew me. Um yeah. so you know, I was out of contract and oh, okay. as opposed to, I was out of contract, I could really speak to any club I wanted to. But, you know, I, I knew Frank Clark and I knew, he knew what I could do. I knew what Frank Clark was about. So that's why I ended up thinking, you know, at best, sometimes better the devil you know. Um, so I went up, obviously spoke to Frank and uh, I knew Forrest had a really good team. Yep. So I was, I was happy to join, definitely. Mm. Uh, so you made your debut against Chelsea at the City Ground. I think it was one-one, and I don't remember if you, you got booked as well on your debut. Was it? Um, I think it was a yellow card. Um, what was it like playing in front of the City Ground? Um, I, I played obviously quite a bit against Nottingham Forest, but yeah. obviously being part of that, because whether we, a lot of people don't realise that Nottingham Forest, although they haven't been up there, are mm. a, are an institution in 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 the game. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, going back to Brian Clough and Peter Taylor and that, you know, that that era really put Nottingham Forest on the map. And there's a lot of tradition that comes with that club. So I was buzzing to to, to be obviously playing and starting for, for Nottingham Forest. And, you know, a very good team as well. Nice part of the uh, of the world as well, Nottingham uh, yeah. in the Midlands. So, no, I was... I was I was I was really pleased signing for Nottingham Forest. I really was. You mentioned um, Brian Clough, and I, I before I come live, I was looking at the story. There were, I think it was on oh, the program under now. The cosh. Under, under the cosh. Under the cosh. And people know might not know. Tell us about the Brian Clough story when you was at Arsenal. Oh, so uh, <laughs> Brian, yeah. well, I'll just tell you the little bit because it's, <laughs> it's quite long, but I don't want to eat up. So um, I think it was a cup game. And uh, Lee Dixon and I were going out to warm up, and Brian Clough's in the in the uh, corridor. Yeah. And at, at, at Highbury, you imagine down the end of the corridor is the home dressing room, and halfway up is the away dressing room, and then you go down to the tunnel, which is a bit further on. 
So we're walking and bouncing the ball and Brian Clough's tech, you know, when he's shouting, Campbell, Campbell, don't you effing hurt me, Campbell, you know, so I'm like, hi, Mr. Clough, how are you? You know, so he's there, don't you hurt me? So I said, no problem, Mr. Clough. So anyway, I walk past him and he boots me in the calf. <laughs> you know, he, I, and I mean, I don't mean just a little tap, he boots me in the calf. Wow. So I turn around and Lee Dixon's like shocked and I'm there and I'm like, you know, what are you doing? What was that for? And he was just like, don't you hurt me, if you hurt me, Campbell. <laughs> anyway, so we get out, get out on the pitch. I'm on the bench. So I said to him, you know, I'm on the bench. Don't leave me alone. So I get out on the pitch uh, for the warm up. Yeah. And every time, because I'm substitute, it was the old white little boxes, yeah. perfect boxes. Yep. And Brian Clough's at the front and he keeps looking over and pointing at me and shouting. And George Graham and Stuart Houston are saying, what's wrong with Clough? He like, you know, what have you done to him? I said, I've done nothing to him. <laughs> I can't tell them he's booted me, like, you know what I mean? So, anyway, yeah. get to it. Cut a long story sideways. I'm, I, he did, 20 minutes to go, it says go and warm up. So, he's going, and he's jumping us like, Campbell, don't you hurt me. Get on the pitch. And uh, I'm involved in a couple of goals. Um, Ian Wright gets both goals, I think it was. Yep. At the end of the game, and I'm, I'm walking up the tunnel and I'm thinking, where's Cluffy? Oh, God, Cluffy's going to get me, like, you know. <laughs> so I end up walking down the, 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 the corridor and he's got the, the door open to the dressing room. Just I just see his eye and he comes out, you know, and he just grabs me and kisses me on the cheeks and he whispers in my ear, you know. Obviously, I didn't effing kick you hard enough, did I? You know, <laughs> you know but do you know, do you know, Mr. Doy, he was a, what, what a man he was, what a character. I've, I've yeah, had a few run-ins with Cluffy, by the way. All I'm good, not. all good-natured. And what, what a man, what a man, what a brilliant manager. Um, so, the first the first season with um, under Frank Clark, I think, was it was it you and was it you and Brian Roy? Or, Me and Brian Roy. Yes. Yeah. What was what was that relationship like as your, as your strike partner? Uh, he, Brian Roy was a great technical player, excellent yep. uh, technique. He, he he played between the lines, which you, you kind of hear now about people playing between the lines. Brian Roy played Brian Roy played between the lines. It was silky smooth. Yeah. But you had all the other players as well. You know, you had Wolney, you had uh, Steve Stone. Yeah, Lars Bahin in there at the time who was, yeah. was a runner. He could run beyond, etc. Um, yeah. Scott Gemmel, all these guys. So, you know, it was a it was a good, good team. And yeah. I really I thoroughly enjoyed it. The, the back four kind of picked itself. Yeah. PFC, Chets, um, okay. Coops, Coop. and, and Des. As and little. obviously Norm, big Norm in goal. Um, yeah. you know, it was a was a was a good side. It was a good, yeah. good side. So, you know, the fact that I'd left Arsenal. My contract was up. Obviously, um, it was transition time there. But to come to the city ground and play with those players were, were very good. They finished, I think, was it third in the league? Third, the third, third in the league, third yeah. Third in the season. Yeah. Obviously, Stan had just gone just to gone. Liverpool. And uh, we're in the, what was it, the European, you were in the UEFA Cup or whatever. UEFA Cup. UEFA yeah, Cup, yeah, UEFA Cup run and stuff like that. So, you know, the club were on the up. Yeah. You said you mentioned about um, Stan Conmore left and... Was it like you had to replace him to, to meet his standards? Well, I think what it was, it was Stan Collymore had a, a, a he had an unbelievable oh. season, yeah. and I think it was the key for when I spoke to Frank Clark. The key people would see it as as a straight replacement, yeah, but it wasn't quite a, a straight re, uh, replacement because what Frank Clark wanted to do. Frank Clark understood he needed more goals from other areas as well yeah. because Stan kind of hurt them, really. Yeah, mm. Because when you take away that amount of goals out of the team, the team are left in stranded, really, yeah. because Stan was, the, Stan was the difference. You take away 20-odd goals a season, any team going to feel it, let alone that Forest side. So what he wanted to, to bring to the table was a player not only who could score goals, but a player who could help everybody else get better. And that was the key. That's what yeah. we spoke about when I spoke to Frank Clark. And at times you saw Stone get more goals, Won't get more goals, Lars Bahedin score. So we were kind of sharing the goals that Brian Roy was getting goals. Yeah. And uh, I think we played Southampton away, didn't we? And we beat 4-3. 4-3. Yeah. Goals from all over, you know. They were, yeah. 
we were coming from all over and that's what Frank Clark wanted. He wanted goals from everywhere. So you couldn't just say, right, we're going to stop Campbell or you couldn't just say we're going to stop Stone. You had to stop everybody and that stop was everybody. Yep. Yeah. Um, your first Forest goal. Can you remember your first Forest goal? Uh, I can't remember it. <laughs> Arsenal. Be it was uh, Arsenal. Uh, oh, yeah, Arsenal at, at Ivory. At yeah. Ivory, yeah, at Ivory it was. <laughs> at Ivory, it was after, was it fourth game? Fourth, fourth game, after your fourth game, game. yeah. Fourth game, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, oh. Oh, that was, believe me, that was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that was sweet. You, but I tell you why, because obviously, they they listen, at the club, I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan. Yeah. From a from a kid as well, and I played against that back four so many back five so many times in training, etc. Yeah. But it was the first time in a real life game that I played against them. Oh, so okay. you know they were winning one nil. They had your Burkamps and your Platt and Wright and all that. Yeah. And um, you know we ended up, I ended up equalising, and uh, we we drew. I think we drew the game one, one each. One 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 yeah. one. And you know my first goal. Back at back at the old stomping ground, Arsenal. Yeah, that was that was nice. I, yeah. Many people won't want me to even remember it, and I, <laughs> that, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. That I, I don't really remember stuff like that. But as, as soon as you mentioned hybrid, yeah, Arsenal. Yes, I remember. That. <laughs> um, <laughs> Curtis so, won't like that. Curtis. <laughs> um, I, I, I've got, I don't know if I interviewed. You mentioned Brian Roy. I interviewed him um, two months ago, and like I said, he mentioned you um, you using the toys for doing your dance moves, and especially with um, you mentioned Chris Bart Williams. Yeah, Bart man. Was, yeah. It, was it organic? You just do little, your little one-two steps. Well, remember, I had kind of had the same relationship with Ian Wright at Arsenal. Yeah, but you know, the the, the, the great thing is Nottingham has such a vibrant black community there as well yeah and you know going down to the to the to the west indian food shops and people seeing you up close and personal was was a big thing for me because yeah. in london you've got the you've got the black communities there so yeah. when i went to nottingham connected with the black community straight away and that's how they connect with the players yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So whenever yeah. we scored or we're doing a dance move or the latest dance move or whatever, <laughs> that's what connected us to to the to the to the crew. You know what I mean? To, yeah, yeah, to yeah. The street. So it was it was nice, and obviously trying to get Brian Ray involved and all that. <laughs> you know, obviously he's not English, but I know the Dutch have a big street scene as well. So you know that was important for Bart man. That was important for myself. That was yeah. important for Des Little. That was important Des for us all there. You know what I mean? Uh, so fast forward. Um, I think it was you know when you got relegated. I think it was um, Frank Clark got sacked. Uh, mm. Then there was a in the Pierce took over for a short period. Yeah, Stuart Pierce took over, and then it was, I think it was Dave Bassett at the end. Was you what? How did you feel when Frank Clark got sacked? Well, I, I think what happened in that that. Um, second season because it was the second season I was yeah. uh, at Forest we we suffered too many injuries and when you suffer too many injuries and you don't have the players in the background to come in and and pick up the slack um, we struggled we really struggled we should never have struggled but when you have key injuries in key positions we just we, we wasn't strong enough as a squad to carry on to carry the team yeah, and we, we we found ourselves in a deficit. It wasn't great. Considering in the season before, we'd had a good run. If it got to the quarterfinals of the UEFA Cup, we'd, yeah. we'd had a we'd had a good we'd had a decent season. Wasn't struggling the season previous, mm. but again, you you have those key injuries at key moments, and they they really do rock the team. And um, getting relegated at the end was was an absolute sickener uh, mm. for everybody concerned. More so myself, you know, first time I've ever been relegated and. Um, was but you, I wasn't. Was you, I, wasn't fit, I wasn't fit at the time. Was, and, you, tempt, um, was, you, was you tempted? You know, like when we got relegated, was you tempted to leave Forest to stay no, in the Premiership? No, no. Okay. I, I, the, the, as far as I was concerned, the, the Forest fans had never seen. They'd never seen the real Kevin Campbell because that first season I was just getting to 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 yeah. to, to know the club. Um, I'd suffered a couple of injuries at the start. And I suffered a, a injuries in the second season, right, virtually at the end, throughout the season. Okay. So, the Forest fans had never seen the real me, and for me to then want to jump ship, it yeah. was—that's not who I am. So, mm. 
Um, I, I remember Dave Bassett taking over in the summer. Yeah. And Dave Bassett saying to me, he pulled me in and he said, you know, I, I remember playing against you, uh, you know, with, with, with Wimbledon and, and stuff like that. And he said, you're a bloody nightmare. He said, well, what do you need? Like, you know, so I said, I said, Gaff, I said, I need, I need to, uh, I need a preseason. I need to be fit. Once I'm fit, then p people will see the real me. And uh, he said, right, well, you've got it. He says, you're fit, you're starting. So, you know, have a good preseason. And he said, you and Pierre Van Oydant's going to be up front. And we go from there. And, you know, he, he had the, he had the, the foresight to, to, and yeah. confidence in me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, so in, in first division, as we, as we call it that time, like I said, your relationship with Pierre Van Hoydonk, um, I think it was like, was it 50 goals between you that, that season? What, more what than that. More was than more, that. Was it more than that? It was um, 60 odd. Was it 60 because odd? We, yeah, we were, the, we were the highest goal scoring pair in Europe yeah. that year. Yeah. Uh, the connection with Pierre was perfect because what Frank Clark wanted me kind of to do with Brian Roy yeah. is me and Brian Roy take it in turns playing on the shoulder. Yeah. And because Brian Roy wasn't the, the physical guy like I was, he found it sometimes difficult to, to get hold of the ball. So it kind of reversed. I was the one who was getting hold of the ball, setting it back, and Brian Roy was the one who was kind of hunting space. But yeah. I was the one who wanted to be the space, to hunt the space. And I wanted Brian Roy to be in the hole, but he probably wasn't strong enough. Now with Pierre, Pierre was perfect. Pierre didn't want to play up there. Pierre wanted to play deep. He wanted to play deep. He wanted to get on the half turn, play balls, play one twos, and get strikes off or, or release players. So I could play on the shoulder. It's perfect yeah. for me. Yeah. So, you know, we never really worked at it in training. It just, it just was, it just connected. That connection was always there because. I am. I was. I was an experienced player. I yeah. knew how to play with Pierre. Pierre was experienced. Dutch international. He knew how to yeah. play with me. So yeah. it, was, it was excellent. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a uh, someone. A Far Forest fans might ask you, um, called Will McCormack. As you know, like Andy Johnson and Ali Rogers, there, there was um, notorious for the antics off the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> was you involved with any of their antics? No, I was. I was. I was a, I was a um, keen observer. <laughs> you know, because you know, this was the great this was the great thing about that squad. Yeah. We had a lot of different characters. We had some crazies, we had some level headed, we had some quiet guys, but everybody we'd all come together and it was a matter of what would Tank and, and John O do this week, you know? Yeah. Cause they because they're both mad. They're both mad. <laughs> and Johnson was mad. They're mad. <laughs> but Tank was just as mad, but quiet mad. So okay. Andy Johnson brought the best out of Tank, you know what I mean? And he, yep. he wanted that. Listen, who knows what they will get? And with a sprinkling of Jeff Thomas in there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Jeff yeah. Thomas was one of the boys as well, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was funny. But yeah. do you know what? It, it actually made the squad because these guys, the antics these guys will get up to, you know, you're always, anytime you come into the judgment, you'll always check your, your boxers. Yeah. Or your briefs, you know, for deep P or whatever algebra. It was crazy, man. These guys were crazy. Socks were, you know, check your check your footwear for the socks being cut in half. And, you know, they were just crazy. They'd get up to all sorts. Yeah. Um, like, I said, like I said, you won the league that season. Um, like I said, I, I witnessed, it was my first time witnessing, but it's my first season ticket, that first season ticket I had at Forest. Really? It was, yeah, it was unbelievable. And, the game against Reading, Chris Bot Williams scoring to, yeah. to win the to win the league. What what was it like at Sitgrand with the fans going mad? Well, it's crazy, uh, Mr. Dor, because I was I'd done my hamstring in the midweek. Yeah. And obviously they were talking about what what permutation are they gonna bring Marl on here, what up? Uh, blah blah blah. And we were saying, you know, Bartman could play anyway, but put Bartman up there. And Bartman was a he was a great all round player. Yeah, he was. He was. And he obviously probably didn't have the pace to to stretch too much. Yeah. But he was technically very good and he had good control. So him and Pierre were playing up front that day and it just seemed we couldn't score, didn't it? You know, it seemed like yeah, we couldn't could score. score. 
so, so I'm in the stand with the fans. You could imagine. And yeah. look, I, 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 I'm a, I'm a good watcher of football. But that day, I was all over the place. I was <laughs> kicking the stand. I was all, I was going crazy. And yeah. obviously, the ball got played over, and Bartman pulled it down in the box, and he done that kind of, you know, drag. He dragged it away from the defender, and the left yeah, foot bang in the corner. Wow, what an absolute <laughs> feeling! City ground erupted, Rops. didn't it? It erupted. I went, I went mad. I went well, mad. you did. I think I must have been. Went, I went madder than you. So I went crazy, and what a fitting way to do it at the city ground. Yes, as well, yes. You know, yes. after that pain the previous season, and you know what, Harry Bassett, I don't think he gets the credit because you know what, you don't, you don't. He said to us, he said, you know what, boys? He said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be funny here. He said. This is in pre-season. He said, if we don't get promotion with what we've got in this dressing room, he said, I'm giving up. He said, I'm going to give up because the quality we've got, nobody yeah. should be able to touch us in this league. And it proved right. We, you know, we got there and uh, what a season. What a fantastic season. What, what a fantastic season. Um, like I said, you mentioned you won the league, um, Kev. At the end, I know, as you know, it, it started to go downhill with players like Colin Cooper going to Middlesbrough. Um, this is from me. Why did why did you leave Forest? Was it your choice or was it the board? No. Well, if you remember rightly, I think Colin Cooper, Colin Cooper uh, went to Middlesbrough in the promotion season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was at loggerheads at times with Harry Bassett, Bassett yeah, 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 about, yeah, 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 yeah. A new, about a new deal. Yeah. And there was times, if you remember early on especially, there yeah. was times where John Elder was playing and, and Colin Cooper weren't. Oh, and okay. then and then there were times where Colin Cooper came back into the team in central midfield at central times. Midfield. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so and and, and, and that one kind of raged on a little bit about a new contract, whatever. It didn't quite work out and Coops went to Middlesbrough. Yeah. But my one was was all bored. Oh, okay. I was happy. We're back in the Premier League. I've got a partnership with Pierre Van Oydem. I've got down. all the. I've got. We've got all the weapons. Yeah. We're ready to go. I'm ready to go in the Premier League, and we're supposed to be going on tour on the weekend. And I yeah. get a call on the Friday. We're leaving on the Saturday. I get a call on the Friday. Yeah. Telling me that I'm not going on tour. That the club have accepted a bid for me. And wow. it's in my best interest to take it. Wow. So, obviously, I get on the phone to my agent, spoke to Ari Bassett. Ari Bassett knew nothing about it. Yeah. So that's going to that's gonna cause a storm internally. Yeah. And obviously, it raged on from there. So the club were telling me, I'm done. I was, I was like I said... As far as fun, I was good. Like I said, that, that, that team we had, like I said, you got Colin Cooper, Steve Chettle, the whole back four, that midfield we had with like with Ian Woe, Scott Gemmell, Chris Mark Williams, Steve Stone, and yourself, Pierre, and hold on yourself. And I was good. But everyone's been asking me this question, Kev. The Pierre Van Hoydon situation, was in your in your opinion, was he right or wrong to go on strike? Well, I'll tell you the story behind the strike. Yeah. And because many people don't, the bond me and Pierre had was 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 really tight, as you yeah. could imagine. Yeah. So Pierre was Pierre was having an extended break because he'd been playing for Holland in the yeah. in 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 the summer. Yeah. So obviously the word got to Pierre that the club was selling me. So he called me. He called me, and I was just about to board the plane at Heathrow. Yeah. So I, I, I spoke to him, I said, Pierre, look, I'm just about to board the plane. I'll call you when I get to Turkey. So obviously the alarm bells are ringing in his head. He's on the, he's on the move to Turkey. So when I land in Istanbul, I ring Pierre, I said, Pierre, what's up? So he said, is it true that the club are selling you? So I said, yeah. I said, they've, so I told him what I told you, that said that, you know, they've accepted a bid and you, you know, you, you, best, you best take it because you, you don't have a future here mm. so he said he can't believe it why would they break up the partnership, the partnership? Mm. Mm. so he he then turned around and said to me i can't believe this he said um I'm, I'm not going back and i thought i thought he was joking yeah so i said pierre come on mate you know what i mean i said 
when it's time for you to go back, obviously, when you get back, go back and obviously you're going to speak to Harry and I'm sure they'll bring somebody else in. He said, but we've got a partnership. We've got, we know that partnership will work in the Premier League, mm. etc. So we obviously wasn't happy. So obviously I go on and do what I'm doing and blah, 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 blah. And then it breaks to me that Pierre hasn't gone, Pierre hasn't gone back. He's gone on strike. Mm. So I get on the phone, I ring Pierre. I said, Pierre, what's going on? Why aren't you going in? He said, no. He says, they they haven't... Re I didn't want you to go. They haven't replaced you. And I'm not going back because they're shooting themselves in the foot constantly. Why would you do that? As a We're a club. We went down now. We're back up. Why mm. would you shoot yourself in the foot? Why would you do that? Mm. So he was adamant that obviously the board was self-destructing. So it, it, you know, it, 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 was, what, it, who, who was the chairman? Was it, was it Saw or Sal? Scholar, 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 Scholar. Scholar. That's it. That's it. Irvin Scholar, and obviously he was an ex-Tottenham. Yeah, chairman. he was. Yeah, he was. So maybe there was that Arsenal Tottenham thing creeping into Nottingham, Nottingham Forest business with me mm. and him, which, which you know everybody would say, why would you get rid of him when these two are the most dangerous pairing in Europe? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And, and fans will ask that, and I could honestly say, Mr. Doe, I don't know why he, I don't know why he done that. I don't know why he would even remotely think of doing that, because mm. we were we were primed for the Premier League. And and if you remember, they were they were new owners. There was there was I think it was uh, yes, yeah, Scholar and oh, I forgot who it was it was now. Yeah, there was new owners. And... Yeah, so they were new owners. So yeah, you've just got back to the Premier League. Why would you shoot yourself in the foot? It makes no sense. So it just, uh, it, it's, it's sad. It, it is really sad. It's like, like I said, you are, th th that team we had in what, what won the league. That was like at least a top six team. Yeah, Premier, league we're Premier League ready. We're Premier League ready. Premier League ready and just. Like I said, when I first, like I said, I, I, I'm a massive fan of Colin Cooper as well. I, I love Ian Wone. I love yeah, Ian with my Wony, you know, yeah. I love Ian Wone as well. Um, I, I can't believe it. Like I said, when I think I was 16 years old and I was just like, yeah, it is what it is. But but you know something, Mr. Do, I'll say this. I got I got quite a few letters from Forest fans in Turkey. Yeah, okay. And they were just saying, I, they can't believe, they, they were in shock basically. Mm. They were in shock that the club would sell me. Mm. But, you know, obviously, the club won't come out and tell the truth. Yeah. So this is why now uh, you've probably seen the, the, the podcast, me and Co Coops and Stonium yeah. and, uh, and stuff you. done yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, with, with Fletch, what yeah, we've done. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, the, you know, it makes no sense. We were mm. Premier League ready. Everybody had played in the Premier League. Everybody had played at the top level and had done done stuff. Yep. So the Premier League held nothing. It was no surprise to us us getting back. Yeah. But you know, it was it was just a crazy time, and why they accepted the bid, I just don't know why. Mm. Do you still speak to like ex players, like I said Chris Pop Williams, Van Hooydonk, or any anyone? Well, I, I speak to the boys now and again, but you know, life is is changed now. Changing. Everybody's doing their thing. But it, the great thing about that team, you know, is whenever we do meet up or we bump into each other, yeah. you're right back to where you were in that dressing room. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. the connections, honestly, the connections were so good. You know, before training, we used to we used to be in the um, the massage room. We created like a little den where the masseurs mm. used to be and yeah. the players used to like hang out. And yeah. we used to, Chris Bart Williams always used to put Jerry Springer on. Did Jerry Springer, Jerry Springer, <laughs> and you know, we, we used to have a right laugh watching it, and you know, because you know there was the obviously you are the baby's daddy or whatever. It was like, oh no, and, and we, then we used to have to go out to go training. So we were walking along the trend. We'll all be talking about Jerry Springer and oh my god, you know this guy's been <laughs> this guy's been having it off with his his, his girlfriend's mom and all this kind of. It's crazy, but that was the banter. We had good 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 crowd there. We had a really good squad. Mm. Um, as I said, um, your story is like I said, you left Nottingham Forest to join it. What what Turks club was it again? Trabzon, Trabzon Sport. Trabzon Sport. Um, I don't know if you want to get the story about, but how long was it? Was you there for six months, weren't you? Eight eight months. It was eight, eight months. months. Yeah, eight months. I was there. I came back in that March window. 
Yeah. To, 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 yeah. You, yeah, you joined Everton afterwards, didn't you? Everton, Everton yeah, on loan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, what was your experience like uh, with that Turkish club? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. You mm. know, a lot of people like to speak about stuff that they don't know. Yeah. A lot of people want to say bad stuff about um, my time at Trabzon. Like, yep. you know, I was racially abused. I was not. And I oh, would say that wholeheartedly I wasn't. Mm. What I went to Turkey not knowing what I'm going into. Yeah. But when I saw the facilities, the facilities put England to shame. Wow. Yeah. So I was thinking, wow. I went to the training ground. So I, they wanted me to sign in Istanbul. But I wouldn't sign. I said, no, Trabzon is an hour and a half flight from Istanbul. Mm. So I said, oh, no, I want to see, I want to see Trabzon. I want to see where I'm training, etc. So we flew, the, the chairman put me on his private jet, flew up to Trabzon, 15,000 fans at the airport. It was crazy. Wow. It was unbelievable. So went, saw the training facilities. I was gobsmacked. Wow. I was gobsmacked. The training facility was had bedrooms at the training facility, etc. You know, it was proper. Wow. Stadium was like a thirty thousand. Stadium's a stadium. You could play anywhere, but your training facility is where you are most of the time. So yeah. that was the key: pitches, wet rooms, um, re recovery suite, gym, everything. I was like, whoa! It was like. No, I didn't see anything like that, really. Mm. So, you know, it was like, yeah, I'm making the right decision. Um, so that's why I said, you, you know what? Brixton lad abroad. Why not? <laughs> why, not? Bri why not? Brixton lad abroad. Why, <laughs> why not? not? Why not? It's a, it's a working men's city. It's not yeah. no, you're not no fancy business. You know, it's a grind. But hey, listen, I'm a Brixton boy. I could survive anywhere. So I went out there. And you know what? I got on with the, the, the crowd. I made great friends there. Okay. I really enjoyed the football. I enjoyed the training. I It was different. For instance, if a game's on a Saturday, you went into camp from the Wednesday. Okay. So you're under armed guard in the training facility, which, <laughs> which was crazy. But, yeah. you know, it was, look, I was there. My wife at the time was in England. She would come over time to time. Yeah, but this was about football, so yeah. being in camp from Wednesday to the Saturday it was fine, no problem. Mm. Um, you, I've, I've, someone's mentioned this very okay. But, um, you said you was one of the most highest top scorers in the Premiership, but you never stopped for England. What, it, what, well, what, didn't get a cap, no cap, did, did, no cap. What, what was your what, what happened? Like, how did you feel? I felt fine. It's just, what? just, just that's the way life is because. Mm. Look, at the time, you, there was a load of strikers around. Yes. Obviously, got, got called up into uh, a few England squads. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I don't know. You, obviously, the, the manager at the time was Graham Taylor. Graham Taylor, so, yeah. And, and he's, he's obviously no longer with us. The, the only person who could probably tell you why I never got a cap was is him. But mm. what it's done, it's made me a trivia question, hasn't it? Yeah. Highest goal scoring Englishman. Yeah. Yep. Um, to score over 100 top flight go or goals to never get a cap. So that's, God's that's life. That is life. Um, when, when, when's the last time, let me mention Forest again, Kev. When's the last time you visited, visited the city ground? Well, last time I visited the city ground was last, last um, was it last season? Last season, I think it was. Um, you pl Stoke, Stoke played game. Forest in a, in a cup. Uh, da, 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 da. was it? Yeah, Stoke it... played Forest in the cup. I'm sure mm -hmm. it was before, this was. Was it last year? Or the year it was last year. Obviously before lockdown. Lockdown was wet. Was oh, March. League Cup. League, league cup. cup. It was a League, league cup. cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, visited, yeah, yeah. I visited Forest. Yeah, because my, oh, yeah, my son was on the bench. Yeah, because my son was on the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and, and, and I saw it from a different perspective because I was in the away end. Oh, you know okay. what I mean, I was in the away end, so I, I didn't want. Listen, I'm not one to be knocking on saying, yeah, I'm an ex-Forest player. And all. <laughs> no, I'm there to see my son. I was with yeah, some yeah, friends. Yeah. We yeah. went as, 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 as away fans. Stunned the away supporters thing. But um, yeah, it was it was nice. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. And uh, uh, it really enjoyed my time and uh, seeing 
my son come on the the hallowed turf at uh, City Ground? Um, look, look, I don't know if you want to mention about your son. And like I said, he's with Stoke. How, as as is your son, how does he? Um, do you think he can get better and play for bigger clubs in the future? Uh, well, that's that's what everybody wants, doesn't it? Um, yeah. You know, my son was at Manchester City um, as a kid growing up. Yeah. Yep. Um, same team as um, Folden and Sancho and all these guys. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know they were they were they were incredible. They, they had an incredible team. But the issue at, at Manchester City is is game time. And game as a time. striker, you need to. You know, they time. made they made him a great offer, but he felt he felt it was the right thing to do to, to get out and get to a club where he got a chance of making the first team. Now, mm. you know, that club was Stoke and, yeah. you know, he made his, it was justified because he made his Premier League debut at 18. Yeah. Um, what he didn't uh, foresee and nobody foresee, uh, foresight was that he'd be on his fifth manager after three, four years. What? Yeah. Which is crazy, really, when you think about it. But, you know, you just never know how to handle these things. But the great thing is, he's he's fitted in his Premier League debut. He's fitted in a loan spell. He's yep. fitted in a form fifth five manager. This is his fifth manager. Yeah. But now he's just starting to get some real continuity and games behind him. Um, yep. Scored nine goals last season, and uh, he's added to the, not only is he scoring goals, he's making assists now. So he's feeling a lot more comfortable playing at that level, which is good. So, um. Back to the story about, about Forrest, Kev. Um, as you know, Forrest um, was really bad end of last season with under Samuel Lamucci. Well, it, fin- it, it ended up, Mr. Dodd, just to cut across you because I want to yeah. help it along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was the Stoke game, wasn't it? It was the Stoke game that actually bounced you just out. Bounced Forrest just out yeah. of the, the playoff. Yeah. Which is quite ironic. Do you know what I mean? It was, was yeah. it was, it was sad. I was sad about that. No, I, I, that's, like I said, as, as, as a Forest fan, that's the worst experience I've ever had as a Forest fan. But um, it is what it is. What it is. Like I was just saying about um, Lamucci left. Um, do, you, do you? I know you might know Chris Hutton. No, no, Chris Hutton. I know yeah. Chris Hutton. Yeah. Was, a Forest fans have been asking me. Do you think he's a man to get his promotion this season or do you think he needs to look at the squad longer and look for next season? Yeah, I, I, listen, what he's got, what Chris has got to do, he's got to assess the squad very quickly. And, and yeah. that's, that's, that's a hard thing to do. Not only assess the squad, but what Forest fans want yeah. is assess the squad and build the squad at the same time. That's a hard thing to do. 100%. Because... The way Chris Hutton, the, the way Chris Hutton does it, he builds it from the back. You've got to stop conceding goals. Yeah. You've got to stop. And in 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 uh, um, is it Lyle up top? Lyle Taylor. Lyle Taylor. Yeah. You've you've got somebody. Who, you've got somebody who could bang them away, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've got players there who can bang them away. Um, Graben as well. Graben he, as well. He can score goals. So you've got the ingredients of some a team who could score goals. But if you're giving them away at the other end, you're going nowhere. So Chris Hutton's got to get the defence right first. Yep. And whereas maybe Lamucci was a bit more flake, flamboyant, you know, out there, you know, express yourself. Yep. But that never got you over the line. Getting you mm. over the line is being tough to beat. Beat. Being tough to beat and having players who can score the goals and get you across that line. So that's what Chris Hutton's got to put in. He's got to assess it first. And then yep. he's got to put that in. It may not happen this season. Although this season's a long season, it may not happen this season. But mm. he will get it right because he's done it before. He's done it a couple of times and he can do it again. And uh, you know what? Forrest are in good hands with, with uh, Chris Hutton, that's for sure. Yep. Um, as a striker, Kevin, I, I know you scored like you scored a bag of goals. I'm going to say two things. What was your, I don't know if you will remember, what was your best goal? For Nottingham Forest, because I remember, like you scored hat trick against Coventry, you scored a hat trick against Crew. I went to the Crew game. Um, I remember your little your little dance at the end yeah. with Chris Mark Williams. Um, what what was your best? I like say, what was your best goal for Forest? Uh, I think I'm not. I'm not too sure. You know, I I, I like quite a few goals I scored for Forest, but um, mm. there was one against Norwich. It was our first home game. 
of that season, that championship season. Oh yes, and we, we beat them four one. Four one, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ball's coming. It's come come at an awkward height, and I've hit it kind of on the side. Yeah, and it's gone into the top corner. Um, there was one I scored. I can't remember who it's against. Where I broke, I ran from the my own half. The ball broke, and I picked the ball up and I ran um, from my own half. Oh, I don't want it. Is. Got in uh, it was at the, like running towards the Trent end. Trent end, yes, I don't want it. Is. And, oh, and I, I slotted it in the corner. Yeah. You know that that was a that was another uh, a, another good one. Um, but you know that 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 championship season was 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 incredible. I mean, yeah. I like I, I liked all the goals because the, all the goals were meaningful. Yeah. All the goals meant a lot. Yeah. Um, so probably I'll stick with them two because no point going over yeah. um, too much. But those two goals I, I really really enjoyed. Yeah. Um. Like I said, I said to Forest, what was your best goal you ever scored? Like for Arsenal, Forest, or Everton, or Transfer Sport, West Brom? I, I haven't got one. You um, haven't got You must have one. No, I don't. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. Because they all have different importance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. That's you true. know, I, I mean, I've scored some, I've scored a, a, a couple of screamers. But would I say they're the best goal? Yeah, could be good goal. They're, they're good goals, but important goals was a header against Paris Saint-Germain to go through to the Cup Winners' Cup final. Yeah. You know, that's important. Scoring for Everton um, when I went there on loan, scoring, yeah. you know, took the first two goal, first of two goals against Coventry to beat them and, and get a win under our belt after hitting the bottom three. Wasn't the greatest goal, but it's so important. Yeah. Scoring the winner for Everton at Anfield, you know, that, the season yeah. after, that's an important goal. Yeah. So... You know, I'm not going to say my fate. I could tell you my favourite goal. My favourite yeah. goal was so for Ar- was for Arsenal against Nottingham Forest at Highbury. Oh, at Highbury, yeah, yeah, Highbury. It was my first goal for Arsenal, okay. and it was the chant. You remember, you never beat Des Walker. Des Walker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Des and me and Des still <laughs> chat about it now. You know, you never beat Des Walker, and uh, I beat Des to the ball, and I, I scored at the at the clock. It was at the it was at the um, North Bank. He was in front of the North Bank and we'd been struggling. We ended up winning the game 3 0. Mm. I came on, I think it was back into the first half. Okay. And um, and uh, yeah, my first goal was got, got to be my favourite. Yeah. Um last question, Kevin. Um do you do you miss playing football with like all the new rules with VAR and all that? Uh I'll tell you what, I'll have a field day if I was playing now because <laughs> you know you, you can't do anything. Defenders can't touch forwards. You can't, you can't do anything. So, I'd have loved to have played now, but no, I don't miss playing football. Um, mm. I love my career. I had twenty odd years playing. Yeah, and it's great. I'm a football dad. I could watch my my two boys. One yeah. of my boys at Stoke, and me youngest boy is at Buxton. Oh, okay. What's, I watch what's, them. What's his What's I his watched, name, Cam? Uh, uh, Kyle. 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 K-Y-L-E. Okay. Okay. And yeah, and I, I could watch them, and I, I enjoy watching them. Mr. Yeah, Dor, honestly, yeah. I enjoy watching them. I've been there, seen it, done it, got the video and T-shirt. Now I could sit back and watch sit them. Back. Sit, that, sit back, watch them play. And, you know, if they need any advice, obviously they ask me. But yeah. I leave it to their coaches. They've got good coaches. They've got good people around them. So I leave it to them and I could just be an observer. <laughs> uh, well, Kevin, you know what? last one but not least, um, have you got like a message for all the Nottingham Forest fans um, on, like I said, your experience that you had at playing for, for the club? No, listen, no, the, the, the message is obviously still still an incredible club. Yep. And, you know, no matter, there's been some hard times of late, of course, I know that. But, you know, it's a privilege for the likes of myself and I speak for some of my teammates obviously under in that great year in uh, yep. uh to get promotion you know we 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 reveled in in playing for the football club yep. with such tradition that yep. you know I, I i'm buzzing to have played for nottingham forest i'm blessed i truly am blessed mr door to have played for the football club you know it wasn't always perfect yep. that i could honestly say it wasn't always perfect and um, we went through some, went for a roller coaster of some tough times as well. But yeah. you know, I'm so pleased that you know that we had some success together, and yeah. that club, the club deserves it. And I, I sincerely hope Chris Hughton and the boys can get 
together and get some success back to, to Nottingham Forest because you know what? Nottingham Forest back in the top flight will mean a hell of a lot. And I might get to visit a bit more. I might get to visit a bit Kevin, more. Kevin, when, when fans come in, please come and visit me. Because like I said, I, am, I, I, I loved you and Pierre van Hooydonk as a partnership. And I need, I need, we, we, we need to meet up, Kevin. I like, we're I'm, connected I'm, now. We're connected, we're connected now. now. So, so when, they, when they let fans back in, which hopefully yeah. is very soon, I, yeah. obviously when, when I'm coming down there, I could uh, connect with you and we could uh, meet 5%, up. 5%, 5%, Kev. But Kevin, I am... Thank you very much for taking your time or your busy schedule to interview me because, like, interview yourself. Because, like I said, I've interviewed David Phillips I met, um, two weeks ago. Uh, good guy, like said, good guy, David. Yeah, he mentioned, like I said, I forgot to tell you, he mentioned you as well. Like I said, um, I think it was, I think it was like Brian, the Brian Roy, you and Brian Roy, and, and you no, know, David Phillips, he didn't, he didn't get much credit because I think he, he used to play that holding role. What, what, quiet what, what, guy, he, quiet guy as well. Yeah, quiet, what, 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 very what, like, quiet. I remember, like, I think, I think, I don't think he was there. He got player of the season as well. Um, I, I, I spoke to him off camera, and he mentioned you as well, and said how, how fantastic Luke he was from Nottingham Forest. Yeah, and uh, you know, players like that saying nice things it means a lot to me because you know, David Phillips, he could play anywhere and play well. Yeah, yeah. He was, you know, you remember back in the day, you had a box spanner for your bike. It yeah. had different. That's what he was. He was a he was a box spanner. He could play fullbacks. He could play midfield. He could play wide. He yeah. could play. He could even play up front. He was that good. Yeah. And you know, he was a superb guy. Very quiet. Very quiet. Like he was unassuming. But I got along with him because I I I got on with everyone um, yeah. at the club. And uh, it's nice of David Phillips. And and you know I hope. You get an opportunity to to send him this because you know. Yeah, would it? No, would it? He's a very, very, very good player, top player, and a nice guy too. Yeah, uh, but Kevin, I, I, I'll let you go because I know you like you could be busy. But um, thank you for taking your time for coming on my channel, and it's it's just I'm just Kevin Campbell, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Mr. Campbell. Dart, I gotta say big up to you, big up to the Nottingham Forest fan base, big up. To the community that I miss, I miss that community. Back in the back in the day where I used to go all the time, yeah. vibrant community, as you mentioned, St Anne's and Meadows, and yeah. all these places. Yeah, I used to go down there regular, meet up with some nice people. I used to go and get my hair cut down there, me and the boys, and yeah. everything. So you know, big up to everybody and big up to all the Forest fans. Love you, man. Yeah, but like I said, Kevin, thank you very much. Make sure everyone subscribes to the channel, and like I said. Please give love to Kevin Campbell. Uh, I, I do want to see you when all the fans can come back. But thank you very much, for everyone, for watching. And Kevin, thanks very much for coming on my channel. You're welcome. Respect, Kevin. Thank you very much. Nice.